Hello everyone. Today let's learn how to find the polar form of any complex number. So here is the complex number z is equal to minus root 3 minus i. We have to write it in the polar form. So the formula is if z is equal to x plus i y is a complex number then in the polar form it can be written as r bracket cos theta plus i sin theta where what are r and theta? Well r is known as the modulus of z and it is nothing but square root of x square this x square plus y square okay and theta is known as the argument of z friends it is any angle between minus pi to pi and this is how you find out its value so let's understand all this by doing this example so here you have z is equal to minus root 3 minus i so if i compare it with the complex number z is equal to x plus i y what will be x Yes, x will be minus root 3, y will be minus 1 friends. Remember, this is minus i, so y will be minus 1. Also remember to note down these minus signs, okay. Now, since we know x and y value, we can easily find out, yes, the r value, that is the mod of z. So, r is equal to mod of z. What is the formula? Square root of x square, which is minus root 3, the whole square, as you can see here. And this is minus 1, the whole square friends, okay. Now, you know that whenever you square a minus, it becomes plus. Root 3 square will be 3 plus this will be 1. So, square root of 4. What is square root of 4? Yes, 2. So, r will be 2 friends. See, very easily we can find out the r value. Similarly, let's find out the theta value or the argument of z. Now, for that, we first need to find out this alpha angle. Now, what is this alpha? It is nothing but any acute angle from 0 to pi by 2, okay? And it is defined as modulus of y by x, okay? Modulus means the positive value of y by x. So, tan alpha here will be modulus of what is y? Yes, it is minus 1. What is x? It is minus root 3. So, anyway the minus and minus will get cancelled. You will get 1 by root 3 friends. Modulus of 1 by root 3 will be again 1 by root 3, right? Now, tan of which angle is 1 by root 3? Yes, tan of 30 degrees is 1 by root 3 but we are going to write it in radian measure. So, alpha will be 30 degrees which is pi by 6 radians. I hope you understood till here friends. But is this the theta value that we want? Not always. Okay. So, to find out the theta value, you also need to find out in which quadrant this complex number lies. So, every complex number can be represented on such a xy plane where x-axis is the real part of the complex number and y-axis is the imaginary part of the complex number friends. So, in our example over here, what will be the x-coordinate? Yes, x-coordinate will be minus root 3. This is the real part of z. And what is the y-coordinate? Yes, it will be the imaginary part of the complex number which is minus 1. So, actually this complex number can be represented by this point minus root 3 comma minus 1 on the xy plane. Now, can you guess in which quadrant this point lies? Yes, definitely it lies in the third quadrant, maybe a point over here, right? Now, if I join this point to the origin, friends, this distance is the modulus of z, r, which you just now found out, right? And this alpha is my acute angle, see, pi by 6, this is my alpha. So, where is the theta? Well, theta is this angle, friends, see? It is always measured from the positive side of the x-axis, okay? This is my theta, so theta will be pi minus alpha but because it's clockwise direction it will be negative so theta will be alpha minus pi friends so here what will be theta alpha which is pi by 6 minus pi what is this equal to yes minus 5 pi by 6 so theta is minus 5 pi by 6 so whenever your point is in the third quadrant just calculate theta as alpha minus pi friends okay so now let's write the complex number in the polar form so z is equal to 2 bracket cos of minus 5 pi by 6 plus i sine of minus 5 pi by 6. Remember to put the bracket sign friends because of the minus sign. Now let's also quickly find out what will be the theta values for other values of x and y. So suppose I have x as root 3 and y as 1. So you will see that x and y both are greater than 0. So in which quadrant will your complex number lie? 
Yes, it will lie in this first quadrant, maybe somewhere over here. So this will be my R and this will be my alpha. So in the first quadrant, the theta or the argument will be the same as alpha, friends. So remember this point. What about when x is minus root 3 and y is 1? Which quadrant will it lie? Yes, it will lie in the second quadrant over here maybe. And this will be my R, this will be my alpha. So my theta here will be this angle, friends. See, it will be pi minus alpha. So remember this also. Now what when x is positive, say root 3, but y is negative, which quadrant? Yes, you guessed it right. It will be in the fourth quadrant. Maybe a point over here. So this will be my R. This will be my alpha friends. So here you will see that theta is again alpha. But look at the direction. It's clockwise direction. So theta will be minus of alpha. So friends, in this way, you can easily find out the polar form of any complex number. I hope that you found this video useful. If so, do like and share the video. Consider subscribing to Enjoy Math and please leave your comments in the comment section below. So till we meet again, take care.